to use here. Amplified. Lord, we Amplified. thank you for, us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us again with your spirit. And we give you thanks. And we give you thanks. We give you thanks. Good morning, all. Welcome with us. Um, just proving once again that we do take requests. <laughs> it has been requested that we study the book of Joel and um, how, good, how good our God is in the midst of these um, wonderful, distressing, uh, thoughtful passages. Um, <laughs> all mm. rolled up into one. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I'm uh I'm so it's just a freaky boat. <laughs> hey, you guys are Ah! Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why I'm getting commercials. I went to Okay. So, um lots of controversy about when the book of Joel was written. Hmm. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it was written before Amos. So, if you don't know what you're doing, you got to know what is actually stated before you go uh, ripping and tearing off that that must be this or that. So what's actually stated is that the temple is still in place. What's actually stated is that Amos, Joel, Amos, Amos quotes Joel. So Joel is at least a predecessor of Amos or maybe a contemporary, but but that that linkage puts us into the timeline. The only things um, that I'm um, I'm certain of now. Oh, come on. Yeah, we, the, uh, right. They, we've got the, uh, this is occurring after the split of the kingdom, first of all. Yes. Uh, the kingdom uh, split after Solomon, um, his, um, his uh, heir, uh, made a pretty stupid, uh, <laughs> in my opinion, stupid, uh, uh, declaration. He, he actually literally increased taxes on people when they were uh, their economy was in decline, and uh, they literally split the kingdom because of it. And uh, Joel is ministered to the southern portion of the kingdom, which is the tribe of Judah, and they maintain the temple area. The northern kingdom went north towards Samaria, and took. Uh, the majority of the tribes, I think uh, nine of them, um, and um, they uh, they were considered the more liberal uh, portion of the whole uh, kingdom, um, and uh, they were the first attack. They were they were wiped out before the uh, the southern portion, um, but Joel. And it's assumed that, that that happened around 900 AD or so, uh, the split. Um, it wasn't until, what, uh, the Babylonians came in around uh, 600 AD, uh, BC, we're talking BC here. Uh, there were three attacks by this by the um, Babylonians, and one of them, they literally uh, wiped out the temple and all of Jerusalem, took the whole uh, rem remainder living there into captivity in Babylon. So uh, that was that was around six. So Joel is in between. He's around eight, 800, 860 BC or so. Okay. And he's considered the the first of the uh, prophets, all the prophets. And by the way, this distinction between being a minor product prophet and a major prophet has only to do with how much they have written. Joel's work is three chapters. So he's considered a minor prophet, but he's actually considered the first of the prophets, and he establishes so many um, firsts and so many things that, for instance, the day of the Lord yes. as a term is first used by Joel. Yes. And um, in biblical studies, things that come up first are often given uh, considerable consideration because uh, that kind of establishes uh, what this uh, what this particular item, whatever it is, is uh, a, 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 at its roots defined as, and uh, it affects literally everybody else's writing to the point where many of the other prophets simply refer to the day of the Lord as so well understood that they simply say in that day yeah. uh, uh, yeah. that it's uh, that 
that's all they had to say in their writings, and people understood. That's the day of the Lord he's talking about. That's sure. for all the later prophets that followed from him, after him. So, right. Joel, so Joel is very, very um, uh, important from uh, many points. Of view. That's just one point, but um, I've spoken too much already. Somebody else say something. <laughs> well, for me, it's like it's a, this consciousness that Israel's purpose is revealed in uh, Revelations. It's the woman with her feet on uh, with the moon. Is it the star? The moon? The, she's standing on the moon with the sun in her hands. It's like that cosmic imagery. Israel that's, is. Just, uh, yeah, that's what you're talking about. Revelation 12. Yeah, that, that's what Israel is. It's all it is yeah. is a group of people that will produce the Christ. That's it. Yes. That's okay. And then their story is like the Bible, which is the word. They live out the word. <laughs> That's right. So like mm -hmm. he's like, this is a consciousness of what it's all about. It's all about Jesus. Yeah. And he's, that's interesting to see that he had this way, 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 way back. Okay. And that mm -hmm. the prophets, they are vaguely conscious of what it's all about. But nobody ever really becomes truly conscious of it till Jesus actually is born. It comes to maturity and tells us in person about what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, there are, uh, there are many um, milestones that are marked by the term the day of. Yeah. You got the day of the Lord, which is Joel, Joel speaks of it. You got the day of man. You got the day of God separate from the day of the Lord. Yeah. Um, and these really uh, can be played out on a timeline right. of uh, biblical history, which we interpret to be a 7,000-year timeline. We're roughly at the end of the 6,000th-year period, um, and uh, that, may, that pretends to uh, bring on the last days, discussions that are coming around, and people looking around and saying, you know, this, this can unravel in a in a flash here uh it's getting to be really precarious times well i think we, um, we kind of like to keep in mind you're supposed to live life one day at a time and the yeah. secret you can never know is when the world ends <laughs> and it will that's happen right. just like that's in right blood. oh oh yep. I guess the world's over, but you, you, the, the key point is never, ever take that as a point that alters any of your plans about how you're going to serve the will of other. Mm -hmm. Never. And always live one day at a time, but we already know yeah. that. So a lot of this stuff with like the feeling that the world's going to end, people have had that sense for a very long time. It's not a new sure. thing. And no. it doesn't matter how crazy the world gets. Father no. can straighten it but out one of the major themes of joel is god is in control that's yeah one of the uh, one of the baseline themes in this this book so yeah that's why we don't really feel scared because we intuitively grasp it you know mm. it's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay so we have joel here as a writer um in the in the pipeline that leads us to amos if you put him in a in a chart but don't do that because the scriptures are set up on purpose, necessarily on purpose by God, but not necessarily chronologically. So this is what God desires us to read today. And so this is where God desired to put this prophet's work into the whole manuscript. But um, so let's go on. For, yeah, for you, for Christians. That's right. Um, so like Job, Job is the oldest book. Right. And it's way. Right. Way in the Bible when you start. Yeah, exactly. sure. There you go. Okay. Yep. So you want to? Shall we read a little bit or just talk about it? Let's read it a little. Bit. Let's read it. <laughs> yeah. We've got the Amplified Bible for starters here. We're in the Amplified. Uh, Joel is three chapters. This is a uh, beginning of chapter one. This is Joel one one. Okay. Amplified. The word of the Lord came to Joel the son of Pethuel. The devastation of locusts. I don't know how many people are going to relate to this, but it's, I mean, if you live in Africa, you realize how real the threat is. Yes. But uh, let's, let's read through this. Uh, verse 2. Hear this, O elders. Listen closely, all inhabitants of the land. Has such a thing as this occurred in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? So he's talking about... Uh, he, he's really describing a vision he had. Um, 
and uh, provision and actual event. Uh, that question is where do where do they get through this? Tell your children about it. And let your children tell their children. Let your next generation. What the gnawing locust has left, the swarming locust has eaten, and what the swarming locust has eaten, the creeping locust has eaten, and what the creeping locust has uh, left, the stripping locust shall eat. There are actually like, a, I think, 120 different varieties of locusts. Um, and uh, so some of them apparently grow as large as 10 inches long, <laughs> you can imagine. And many of them are tired, tiny, tiny. Yes. But uh, they are devastating. When they, they come in in a swarm, they, and they just, they'll just, I mean, civilizations have disappeared because of locust attacks because they just wipe out everything edible. Yes. All right, so having said that. It's like panic buying when they bought all the toilet paper. Yes. And then everybody's, yeah. they're, they're like, their hearts are despairing. There's no toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> Brawls over the toilet paper. Yeah. Okay, so uh -huh. there's different thinkings about this and the culture of the Jews understood the devastation of the locust. They understood it in the, in the Egyptian plagues and they had right. work out and massive, um, hundreds of thousands of square miles being destroyed by by the locusts there. And, mm. and what that does is it sets everybody to panic, like Matt just says. But what what's our reaction when there are natural, quote, natural disasters and other things? Well, there's ki two kinds of reactions you can have it. You can have it as a wake up. You know, come, come to God, come to church. We had a um, a hurricane that was about to hit Jamaica, and we prayed and we prayed and we prayed, and the thing spun around Jamaica, went out to sea, and came back on land. And I thought that the whole church would be full with people giving thanks. Nope, didn't happen. Okay, God, you did that. Now I'm not just critical of the Jamaican people. It works in in every culture that when God mm -hmm. delivers you, you need to give thanks. When God works through you, you need to give thanks. When God God does the miraculous in an astonishing way or in a very mundane way, you need to give thanks. So here we have a, a, a locust picture just devastating the countryside. And the call here is we get to the end of this chapter. I don't know if we will, but when we get to the end of this chapter is repent. The call is yep. to repent. Good well, morning. he says, wait, awake from your intoxication. That's right. And that's what you're seeing. It's like people who walk in darkness. Yeah. They, oh my, they, it's like for us, if we, we feel a little bit of sin and it's like, oh, it's horrible for them. They just swim in it. They're like, I don't, it, it doesn't even affect them. It's, that's right. I remember how it was when I was dead. Like nothing really shook me up that bad. That's right. And, and, and it's, it's like, it's, you're just a nerd to it. The, the darkness feels natural. There you go. Uh, yeah. Put me on my page also, please. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Kathy. Good Hi, guys. Morning, Melissa, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So to wake somebody up and that's you have to destroy all their food supply. <laughs> <It's> like... <Yeah. laughs> so we're pick, picking up at verse five. Yeah, we're doing Joel 1, verse five in the Amplified. Mm -hmm. uh, awake from your intoxication, you drunkards, and weep. Wail, all you drunkers, drinkers of wine because of the fresh sweet wine that is cut off from your mouth. For a pagan and hostile nation has invaded my land like locusts. Okay, yep. so uh, he's drawing now an analogy to a pagan army to yep. be like a, a plague of locusts. Yes. Okay. So there's a little expansion in his thought here. Um, Mighty and without number, its teeth are the teeth of a lion and its fangs of a lioness. It has made my vine, my people, a waste and an object of horror and splintered and broken my fig tree. It has stripped them completely bare and thrown them away. Their branches have become white. So talking, uh, you know, obviously locust destruction. Keep going. Uh, wail, verse 8, wail like a virgin bride clothed in sackcloth for her bridegroom of her youth who has died. Uh, the daily grain offering and the drink offering are cut off because there's nothing, <laughs> nothing around to sacrifice. 
from the house of the Lord. The priests mourn, who minister to the uh, who minister to the Lord. The field is ruined. Uh, the ground mourns. I got to scroll my script here. The ground mourns. The ground, ground mourns. The, uh, for the grain is ruined and the wine is dried up. The fresh oil fails. Be ashamed, O farmers. Wail, O vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field has perished. The vine dries up and the fig tree fails. The pomegranate, the palm also, and the apple tree. All the trees of the field dry up. Indeed, joy dries up and withdraws from the sons of men. Wow. Go ahead. Close. Tim, 13, please. Continuing? 13, verse 13. Close yourselves with sackcloth and lament. Cry out with grief, O priests. Wail, O ministers of the altar. Come spend the night in sackcloth and pray without ceasing, O ministers of my God. For the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Wow. It's just it's okay. just not there to, to sacrifice. It's gone. So we have we have this vivid picture of an invading army just wiping out Israel. And we've seen that happen numerous times in history. They come in, they um, Israel falls away from their place of grace, an invading army comes in and devastates them, and then um, scatters them, and somehow they've kept it together because the Lord God there. And But when you see natural disasters and physical disasters, the first thing you need to do is pray because, because it sets you up to not be dependent upon. Uh, Habakkuk says, even, even if the figs don't produce on any vine, I will still serve you, Lord. And what an incredible picture that is. Um, so pray. And then when we see um, political disasters and when we see economic disasters, the call is to pray and to fast and to make a difference. In other words, when things get really bad, you need to so, so be intertwined with a loving relationship with the good father that they stuff. didn't have a father in heaven. They had a God. They had a God. And God is a lot different from Father. Because what is happening here is like now under this covenant, it's a very personal relationship. And on a one on one basis, each of the members of the kingdom of heaven, the body of Christ, can go through this process. And the rest of us, we live our lives and nothing happens. Under this covenant, the whole country had to. It, for, for for them to come to, to the Lord, their society had to be disrupted so completely that they were removed from the land and they were in anguish. And then the small remnant could actually come to depend on the Lord for That's all right. things. And then when they were worthy, you know, they were worthy in spirit, they could go back and they could rebuild. But this is like... It's like with us, our covenant's one-on-one -on -one basis. On their covenant, the whole country has to go through this process. It's massive and impressive. It's, it's just like so, ooh. <laughs> so <laughs> back in verse three, thank you. Back in verse three, we can tell our kids and tell our kids' kids and tell about these disasters and about coming back to faithfulness in God Almighty and then mm -hmm. And then God can really use the gift of repentance um, nationally and internationally, and so you mm -hmm. and personally. So the gift of repentance has a huge value in a nation in trouble. And if my people who are called by my name, most of you know that scripture, yes. will humble themselves and pray, humble themselves pray and seek my face. And repent and turn from turn from their wicked ways. That's repentance. Yes. Uh, then I will hear from heaven and uh, heal their land. Amen. I think there's one other verse in there that I missed. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so here we have. The, the, we lost the sound and we're back with the sound now. But thank you guys for keeping me updated on that kind of stuff. Let's oh. let's try um, fourteen. 14. Uh, yeah, starvation and drought. Consecrate a fast. Proclaim the solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land. 
to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord in penitent pleadings. Alas for the day, for the judgment day of the Lord is at hand and it will come upon the nation. That's, that's by the way, there's the verse right there, 15. Uh, alas for the day, for the judgment day of the Lord. There it is, the first usage of the, of the phrase, the day of the Lord in the Bible. So this, this is where it gets established as a concept. The day of the Lord, it's, it's, it, the Amplified uh, pegs it as a judgment day. So there's no uh, ambiguity here. What, what is uh, and it will come upon the nation as a destruction from the Almighty. So this is God's judgment day. That's right. What is it referring to? For it refers real, to uh, from the what which judgment? The day of the Lord refers to from the time of of the rapture to the end of the millennial kingdom. Now, some people say from the time of the rapture to the end of the tribulation period, but um, so all kinds of thoughts. No, it's I mean not, it's just it's the final judgment. The war is over. Now we're going to judge everybody. You were tears, you were wheat. Boom. We're all done. That, Eternity. That, no. that judgment day is a reality. Yeah. The day of the Lord is... Yeah, as a period. Right. It's, it's used as a period of time, but uh, right. there are, uh, many translate this as also one day. That yeah. is the judgment day. That's right. When the Lord shows up again. That's right. And he cleans well, house. Just, Some people believe he final... cleans house that, they, that the... Uh, that the revelation, all of the tribulation through the revelation period uh, is still, uh, for the most part, due to man, the sins of man, the sins, the sins of creation, uh, etc. But the Lord cleans house on the judgment day at the end of the tribulation. That's, that's, a, uh, that's a messianic perspective, messianic Jewish perspective. So, uh, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Because <laughs> Those are the guys that, anyway. Has not the food been cut off before our eyes? Joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seeds of grain shrivel up under the clods. The storehouses are des desolate and empty. The barns are in ruin because the grain is dried up. How the animals groan. The herds of cattle are bewildered and wander aimlessly because they have no pasture. Even the flocks of sheep suffer. O oh Lord, I cry out to you. For fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness and the flame has burned up all the trees of the field. Even the wild animals, animals pant in longing for you. For the water brooks are dried up and the fire has consumed the pasture of the wilderness. So the, the challenge for us here is when we see hard times that we pray and we fast and we repent and get our own lives in order and get our family's lives in order and then we can be used by god in the greatest possible way so there's some people that lose faith in difficult times there's some people who actually lose faith in the best of times i get everything i need i don't need god um, so whatever the times we need to have eyes to see the times and we need to have a heart that cries out the uh, Continental Congress was at a standoff. You had politicians um, screeching at each other and um, just not getting it done day after day after day. And they had this thing to write called the Constitution. And, um, and the most, one of the two least religious men in the Constitutional Congress said, we got to stop this. We're going to declare a day of prayer and fasting. And they did, and now, and then the Constitution was born out of that, out of that prayer and fasting, because these politicians in 1700 could go on arguing with each other for months. Oh, yeah, they did. But when a day of prayer and fasting happened, then it came together. So as Christians today, we need to look up, see the troubles around us, and cry out to God with prayer and fasting and repentance. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and repent and seek my face, I will hear from heaven and heal the little land. The challenge is not that the politicians all repent, though that is needed too, but that my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and repent. Mm, to learn to rely on God for all things. That's true. That's for true. Always for eternity. Amen. Yeah. So, yep. so that starts us in Joel, and you think, 
what a harsh way to start. And the answer is no. What an obvious way to start yeah. that in suffering and there's and obviously in our day, we have convoy of hope going into every kind of crisis area already for it. Um, but but that we would personally repent of our sin and of our nation's sin. God, I'm sorry for the sins of America. I'm sorry that we we care more about politics than our fellow believers. I'm sorry, Lord. So personal repentance, but there's also a corporate kind of repentance that says, God, change me. Let me be a vessel of change and not of and not of destruction and not of hatred. Wow, we went a long time today. <laughs> um, but we, so we, the challenge is for us to read this, understand it, and then we'll go on to chapter two tomorrow, Lord willing. Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us again with your spirit, and we give you thanks. In Christ's name, amen. Yes, Lord, thank you again for uh, these um, accounts that are both ancient and yet relevant, perhaps more relevant than we uh, care to acknowledge, but we better wake up to the fact that the things you say are eternal and uh, will come to pass and help us to understand our place uh, and that we uh, come to realize what we have drifted from, that we might renew our relationship with you through genuine repentance, uh, that we may live lives and be the people of, of you that we are intended to be. Uh, that we may glorify you, we pray in Yeshua's name. Amen. Uh, thank you, Lord, for giving us a book that truly does form the foundation of all understanding of how to live. Yes. And everything yes. is contained in it, even the days we live in. Yes. And we now see that what you were trying to do with your prophet, Joel, your servant, is to impart a consciousness of their place in cosmic history that they are the children of Israel, and that they are to birth the Messiah. And we must become conscious of our place in cosmic history, that we depend on God, even though we have comfy little couches and warm little houses with wonderful little TVs and nice little phones. These things do not form the basis of a life independent from you, our Lord God. They are just material things that rip us apart unless we know that we are being ripped apart. So in this era, we need to see that and become conscious and to truly in desire to depend on you for all things. Yes. And that's the process that I believe is happening. And, and, and please, we wish to carry out your will yes. and empower all of your servants to the degree that they can handle it so that we may as quickly as possible move on to the next part of cosmic history where new challenges await and new threats to our dependence on you will be solved by you and by your future servants. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 In fact, reading the whole book before tomorrow is probably good for all of us. Take care.